Hold up your wristband. This wristband is your lifeline. As long as your light is on and your arm is up, you are alive and safe. We are treated every day to one account or another of a successful hacking attack. However dangerous that may be to the security of the United States, it doesn't begin to match the danger of a cyber attack against one of our power grids. Imagine what the consequences of that would be. Darkness. Extended periods of darkness longer and more profound than anyone now living in one of America's great cities has ever known. The amount of water, food, and fuel consumed by a city of several million inhabitants is staggering. Emergency supplies are sufficient only for a matter of days. People are already dying. Thirsty bunch, aren't you? Yes. The count up you just saw represents the days after a cyber attack, from day one to day 365. I'm sure you noticed that most of your bracelets fizzled out of power during that time. If your bracelet is off, you may assume that you have been severely impacted by a cyber attack. <laughs> Left without water and food. I suppose in the current political climate, it would be appropriate to say this is another example of fake news by the lying media. <laughs> that is essentially what we're going to be talking about for the next, oh, six or seven hours. We have an extraordinary panel of experts. Uh, with whom I'll be speaking in just a few minutes, but I wanted to give you a, a little bit of background. Um, I focused my book, Lights Out, on the electric power grid because it seemed to me uh, that if someone successfully interferes with one or all of our power grids to the degree that millions, if not tens of millions America, of Americans are deprived of electric power, over an extended period of time, all kinds of other things, communication, uh, medical supplies, the, the availability of just about everything we need to sustain life and our culture as we know it would be severely impacted. Last night, and I know all of you were there for, or most of you at least, for the conversation with Secretary Gates, Bob Gates talked about what it would take, what kind of a definition would be required, what kind of a cyber attack, to what level would it have to rise before it could be considered an act of war. If I may, let me respectfully disagree with the focus on the ultimate extreme. Part of our problem is that we respond to events in such a way that sometimes a relatively minor attack 
on the United States can prompt an excessive reaction. I want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes about terrorism. Because as Secretary Gates indicated last night, you've, in effect, you've got two intersecting lines on a graph. You have those nation states, Russia, China, which have the greatest cyber capability and which do have the capability of knocking out one or more of our electric power grids. We have three of them in this country. As you go down the capability scale, however, and, and uh, Secretary Gates, I think, appropriately noted that neither Russia nor China would be inclined to use that except in a case uh, where essentially a war already existed. But as you come down the capability scale from Russia to China to Iran to Syria to North Korea and ultimately to these independent terrorist groups, as the capability goes down, the likelihood of a cyber attack actually goes up. I don't think that there is any serious question that a group like Al-Qaeda or ISIS, if it were able to purchase the expertise to launch a cyber attack against our infrastructure, that they would hesitate for a moment from doing it. Let us reflect for just a brief moment on what the purpose of terrorism is. Terrorism, after all, is a strategy that is employed by the weak against the strong. It is designed to provoke overreaction. Take a look only at what happened in the wake of 9-11 in this country. After the World Trade Center was taken down, after the attack on the Pentagon, after the failed attack that was presumably headed either for the Capitol or the White House. In the wake of that attack, the United States launched not one, but two wars, which are still in progress. Over the course of those wars, hundreds of thousands of people have died several thousand, 5,000 or more American troops have died. The United States, in the wake of 9-11, is estimated to have expended some $3 trillion. I want you to reflect on that for a moment. I know you're all very, very bright people, but think about the definition of a trillion dollars. I want to explain it to you in a fashion that perhaps you've not heard before, and it, it may help sort of illustrate just how much money it is. I want you to imagine a business that began in the year that Christ was born, and that business proceeds to lose $1 million a day, day in, day out, seven days a week, 365 days a year generation after generation after generation. The family is incredibly hardworking, but dumb as a post. <laughs> a million dollars a day, every day. It'll be another thousand years from today before that business has lost one trillion dollars. We have expended $3 trillion over the last 15 or 16 years in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's money we didn't have. It's money we didn't raise. No additional tax was imposed on the American public. We borrowed that money. We borrowed it from the Japanese. We borrowed it from the Saudis. We borrowed it from other Gulf states. We're going to have to pay that money back at some point. My, my point in making this case to you is that in the wake of an attack that was designed to provoke overreaction, we overreacted. We're here this morning to talk about something that has not yet 
happened. What you saw so dramatically displayed before is simply speculation. Is it possible that an electric power grid can be taken down? It is. I am told that we already have. The Chinese and the Russians have penetrated our grid, as we, in fact, have penetrated theirs. Is it likely to happen? Well, at some point or another, it's probably inevitable. What have we done to prepare for it, to prepare for the consequences of something like that? Is it possible that we can prevent something like that from ever happening in the future? These are some of the issues that we're going to be talking about this morning. 